trying again. <laughs> the T2 Tile Project it is a uh, attempt to prototype an entire hardware software stack, a whole new computational stack that uh, can be scaled indefinitely large, a computer from here to Pluto, if we want it. Does it sound crazy? We'll see. Uh, uh, this is T Tuesday update. Um, the T two tiles themselves are actual hardware. Uh, um, this is the special one called the Keymaster, uh, um, but they're all the same size. We've got close to a hundred of them uh, in the matrix at the moment, although we're not using them all all at once for the moment. Uh, but all of that hardware has, is connecting to a simulated robot that we call BV to explore the uh, mind-body connections and that kind of stuff using this uh, architecture. So last week, uh, BV had a big demo, and so let's catch up to get started today. So BV aced the big demo, and the lab director was happy, and the funder was happy and pleased he'd showed leadership by making BV's job harder at the last minute. And the engineers and scientists and staff went to celebrate in the various ways of their clans. But Seneca the summer intern stayed in the lab with BV. Great job, BV, said Seneca. Ah, oh, shucks, thanks, said BV. Just doing what came naturally. Could have done it forever. Hmm. Could you? asked Seneca. What would you do after all the yellow balls were cleared away? No idea, said Beavy. Let's try it. So Seneca reset the rig, and Beavy leaped onto the grid. What will you do, asked Seneca. What will I do, asked Beavy. So all the balls are gone. Beavy's knocking around the edges as Beavy tends to do. Actually manages to knock both the planets that are supposed to be safe into the red area that Beavy is now afraid to go into. And he's like a moth around a flame. So. That's what BV does in the long run. It's not very satisfying. Uh, uh, perhaps BV needs a bigger mission in life, and perhaps we have a chance to get to that. We'll see. So the goals for this time, uh, I'll talk about them in, in a little bit of various ways, uh, but they, they mostly boil down to uh, a new brain for BV, and I'll explain why a little bit as we go along. So, uh, BV's purpose in life, yeah, we're not completely sure. BV needs more yellow balls, uh, uh, and we'd like to <laughs> have a, a little bit of a more fulfilling life uh, for BV, as for us all. So, implementing a self-image in that spirit. I haven't been talking enough about uh, community stuff. You know, I used to call it education and outreach, uh, uh, but that seems really, really wrong. What it's really about is community. Uh, it's not just like you want to, you know, shout, uh, outreach, outreach. You know, you want to interact. You want to go back and forth. So I've been gradually talking to more folks and starting to work with folks. Lou uh, Wilson and I uh, actually made a collaboration, and, and we submitted this paper to a, a crazy workshop conference in computers uh, called Dialogues in Natural Code, and I talked about that in the last update, and the news for this update is it was accepted. Actually, it was <laughs> conditionally accepted. So one of the reviewers, of course, uh, had problems, didn't, didn't really, you know, even the, the negative review wasn't 
that horrible uh, uh but they wanted some changes and so we're working on that and the changes are going to have to go in and get accepted or rejected before the next t tuesday update so that's part of our goals but what is dialogues on natural code about well it's, it's about you know talking in terms of people as if people are programmers people are program and, and people are computers so we're programming each other by doing these acts of code transmission like i'm doing right now uh, and that the idea of the self-image and this strange looking symbol that looks like a little guy or whatever it is uh, uh is called the the self-image and that comes from a separate crazy endeavor that i've been working on a long time actually longer than the T2 Tile project by a lot, but it's going very slowly, uh, uh, called the Hyperspace Academy, where the goal is, as far as anything, is to collect the, all the materials, make a curriculum for how to understand uh, us as living computations and how to make sense out of things without using all the sort of crazy, well, that's just human nature. Nah, it's not human nature. It's the nature of computations. The Hyperspace Academy in principle, is trying to gather that information, organize it, create it. So the self-image, the key to it is that instead of being any specific thing, instead of saying, you know, I think, therefore I am. So the fact that I'm a thinker is the important thing. What we have, the self-image consists of four processes. So we are a collection of processes rather than a specific thing. Is this, is that. The four processes, input, sequence, judge, and output. And, you know, input, sequence, and output are very familiar from digital computing. Judge is a little bit weirder, but the claim is, is that all four of them typically have roles in significant, important con computations that we would want to understand. So from the paper that Lou and I made, uh, this is a, you know, a, a kind of a goofy little data sheet explaining the self-image API. Uh, I call, I'm trying to call it APIs instead of APIs to be the technical term for natural code API is an API. So self is an API. And so the point of this little symbol is that you got input is in there, output is in there, sequence is, goes around the head, and judge goes up and down the feet like that. And we try to analyze stuff. And in particular, uh, we can implement machinery based on this stuff. And that's what this project is about. So uh, the goal is in 2024, which feels very quick, implement all four self-image processes on the T2 matrix, improving BV's ability somehow by virtue of having all four of them. Now, at the moment, it, BV clearly has a notion of input and output that comes uh, from the sensors, that come from the simulated, the 3D environment, the physics environment that we're using, PyBullet, and sends it up to uh, what either the matrix uh, itself in the other room or the simulator, the MFMS simulator, if I'm just debugging stuff. Uh, but it really has not, well, and it, ha it doesn't really have a sense of sequence yet, or has a very, very limited one, and it has no really sense of judge. The next goal is to try to get it to do some kind of sequence. In order to do that, I needed, I decided I needed to step back and change a whole lot of stuff. So it's it's really hard to see what's going on here. This is all fuzzy, but the, the, the little teeny white dots that you see there that make kind of a sort of a mushroom shape with a little stem down it, those are actually the sensors and the motor terminals that where information comes from the spine and the, uh, goes back to drive the motors. And these larger things in between are the signals that are moving from one to the other. And the reason it's in the shape of a uh, mushroom is so that uh, all of the signals can kind of shoot through and see each other and get from uh, A to B without running into a lot of trouble. So the point was to get it close together. But this has the significant limitation that every single site in the grid, which we can hardly see in this picture, it's so zoomed in, uh, um, has to have room inside it for all possible destinations. And so there were only four destinations that we had 
uh, in BV's original brain so we could fit it in. But if we want to have a lot more destinations, we're not going to be able to do it. So we needed to reinvent it. And the idea was to go with crossbars or something like crossbars. Now, crossbars comes out of, well, it's, it's, it was most useful in telephony when you want to pick up a phone and dial a number and talk to somebody somewhere else. And in the simplest, simplest version of it, you could have, you know, all the incoming lines coming down vertically, say, and all the outgoing lines moving moving out horizontally or vice versa, and by putting plugs in, making connections at various cross points, uh, you make connections, you make wire connections. Now, this is the simplest thing, and there's lots of other ways to do it, and lots of super refinements and so on and so forth, but just to take the simplest idea. So, over the last month, uh, I have implemented <laughs> X-Bar Space 2D, uh, uh, which is this simple uh, uh, little... Uh, so we have a grid. We have a three by three spaced grid, and each element of that grid is cap is uh, x bar space two d is capable of representing a destination on a column and or a dest and uh, a destination a source on a column and a destination on a row, and uh, to be able to have one outgoing signal heading down a column and one incoming signal heading across a row. So unlike the real crossbar, the official crossbars in telephony back in the day, where when you made a connection, you actually made copper, copper connection. It was actually an electrical circuit from here to San Francisco, if I'm calling long distance. And, and, and that is, you know, <laughs> incredibly expensive, uh, but also really great for latency, which was the, the sad state of talking to people on the internet today, the horrible latency. It's because we don't have this kind of switching anymore. In this case, it's not circuit switching. In this case, each individual ad Atom is forwarding the signals through as it comes along. So it's not going any faster, but it has a pre-reserved space for outgoing and incoming signals. Okay, so here's what it looks like now. I'm, I think I'm already running way late, but we'll <laughs> go along today because I messed up at the beginning. Uh, uh, so here along the top row are the sensor inputs, and here down the left-hand column are the motor outputs, and as the thing runs, we uh, signals come in, and they switch and go over to the other side, and so on. So let's take a look at how that's coming along. So the architect came down to the lab to talk to BV and said, we want to give you a self-image. And BV said, cool. And the architect said, so is it okay if we uh, replace your brain? And BV asked, will it make me smart? And the architect said, well, we're not sure, but we know you'll have a self-image, though. And BV said, okay. And so the work began. For a long time, Bibi just sat there as bits of brain flickered in and out of existence. But finally, Bibi began to move, and it was clear that Bibi's new brain was not very smart at all. But the engineers kept working, and gradually things began to work very, very gradually. The first task was pursuing yellow balls, and Bibi was eventually able to do that, although the follow-through had problems. After all, Red Escape was an entirely separate grip that Beattie's new brain didn't have. But even after the Red Escape began functioning again, there was still tricky adjustments that needed to be made. And then, of course, there was no Explore. So after Beattie drove the yellow ball off, Beattie just sat there. During the tuning of the red sensitivity, sometimes BV was so touchy about red was that BV backed away too soon and didn't even drive the yellow ball into the void. Still in all, eventually, BV's three grips all began to work again. They didn't really work much better than they had before, but they did work quite similarly to where they had before, all the way down to the very slow approach when BB was pursuing a yellow ball from far away. There 
was something different. Something had changed in Beavy's eyes. Beavy's new brain could move Beavy's eyes. It didn't really know what to do with it yet. That was for the future. So BV's eyes are two more motors to rotate the left and right eye stalks, that's what I call them. And uh, uh, that creates a lot of trouble. Uh, and at the moment, BV's brain is not complex enough to do the calculations that I would like to do to get that information to be used more sensibly. So that's the current state of things. Uh, we were supposed to have uh, X crossbar spikes, got that. Uh, body effect the display. I'm not even sure what that means exactly, not so well. Uh, uh, but next up, August 6th, uh, demo the crossbar sequencer and so on. We shall see. Uh, basically, what I need to do now is step back and uh, clean up the crossbar stuff that I have, generalize it a little bit so that it can go in different orientations and stuff like that so that we can start sticking multiple crossbars together to make more complex switching architectures. That is it. The goals for uh, next time officially are uh, the Onward Essay Revisions. That's the paper with Lou uh, Wilson and I have to be submitted. Uh, BV recalls a sequence the third process of the self-image and have a whole bunch of fun. Uh, one of these days I'll stop screwing these things up. Thanks so much for being here. I hope to see you next time.